Everybody, welcome back to the Miniac. And I know there's not a lot of people watching right now, but we have Nick Tubbs from the Mini Vlog with us, and we got Gabe Bridger from Motoring File joining us as well. So, going to be a lot of talk today. It's mini news, and we have a lot of stuff to cover over uh, from the last uh, couple of weeks, especially with the launch of the new J01 Electric, the launch of the U25 Countryman. It's been busy, and these two folks here had the had the added bonus of being able to actually see these cars in person. So I am incredibly jealous, but we're going to chat with everyone here and uh, start diving in. So first off, let's bring up the new mini mo- the new mini models. Obviously, we have the new U25 Countryman and the J01 Electric Mini Hatch. So uh, Gabe, Nick. Tell us a little bit about what you what you all saw about this, Gabe. You saw this. I think you saw these vi- these vehicles a lot sooner than the rest of us did. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'll go quick because I want to hear what Nick has to what, what he thinks because you just recently saw them. I, I think I think for one, I think the reaction and I we, we've talked about this on we talked about this on White Riff Radio actually. Yeah, you know, we predicted the reaction. Everybody could predict the reaction. Every you know, it's like there's a certain percentage that will always hate anything new. There's a certain percentage that will eventually come around. And there's another percentage that will just immediately look at it and say, okay, interesting. You know, like, uh, tell me more about that. Let me, I, I want to, I want to investigate more. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing from a reaction standpoint, my reaction and I'll give it, and, I, and I've written about it ad nauseum. So I'm, I'm going to be brief, go read about it. Motorfell. As I walked, as they pulled back the curtains on these cars and as I walked up to them, I, I looked at the Cooper and like, okay, great. It looks exactly what you think it would look like in person. But it was the countryman to me that was the standout in a lot of ways. Oh, yeah. I mean, stylistically, it it comes alive in person in a different way. Um, there's a voluminous sort of character to it on the on the sides. Um, the size of it, I know people are like, oh my God, it's huge. And yeah, it's bigger. It's not giant, it's still a very small crossover. Like yeah. really one of the smallest you're ever gonna see in the US, period. Um it feels right the size you know everything about it just feels right i think they nailed the brief and with the aceman you know in some markets sitting in between them which was the old r60 size like it's kind of a perfect group of cars but um i could go on forever but i'll nick i want to hear your thoughts yeah i mean i had some pretty similar thoughts to that i, I we see the cooper and it, it looks great it's what we expected the cooper to look like um but the countryman was for me the clear the clear winner here like the like you said, the proportions and the size, they're all great. I just couldn't stop staring at it. It was like, it looks better in person than any of these videos and pictures that we've captured can even express it. It's just such a cool working car. And Mm -hmm. the back end is really nice. I I think that back end on the Cooper uh, could use maybe some work. If it looked like the Countryman, I think it'd be a clear winner if it was that way. But, you know, it is what it is. But the the Countryman, I'm, I'm super excited. The interior on that mm-hmm. seems to be miles better. Like the the current generation interiors are are really nice interiors, right? They're they're all BMW esque mm-hmm. and really nice soft touch materials. But somehow they've elevated that quality. It felt like of those interiors on both of those cars, especially that Countryman. It was just wild to see in person. And it it seems like it's a really outlandish, wild design. But when you see it, it's like, oh, this is mm-hmm. this is tame enough to be sold on the streets adopted by many people uh, mm-hmm. but still stand out enough you know the current cars don't they're nice i don't feel like they stand out as much as they could like it seems like almost every car out there looks like a countryman now you got the nissans that look like the countryman yeah. the kias that look like the countryman and i was like man everybody tells me oh i just saw a Hyundai countryman or i saw a kia countryman I'm like no it's the countryman is a different car and so this to me makes it feel like it it, it's going to stand out again in the crowd. It's going to mm-hmm. be different. It's going to be unique. It's going to be kind of what I've always pictured Mini to be, you know, a, mm-hmm. a bit different and mm-hmm. a bit expressive. And the the drivers seem to be the same type. They're, they're unique. They want to stand out a little bit. They want to be expressive and, and not follow the crowd. And this Countryman really, really accomplishes that in my book. And mm-hmm. yeah, clear winner for me is the Countryman uh, between the two. Yeah. In the, I, in I, the, I, in defense of some of the people out there that thought it looked it looked strange, I initially, when I first saw the uh, camouflaged car, I could see what people were were going on when they said that it looked like 
uh, Nissan Rogue, I could see kind of that shape a little bit on the front when it was cut completely wrapped up. So I could see what they were go what they were going at. Yeah. Um, I think it looks really cool. Everyone's making there, there's been a lot of complaints going out there like, oh, it doesn't have round headlights anymore. And I'm like, the country never never had round headlights. They were kind yeah. of the blob oval shape. They were never they were never shaped like a like no. a circle. Yeah. So it yeah. was never it was never gonna be it was never gonna be <clears throat> I knew they were gonna go with a little bit more dramatic with this car because the countryman was gonna get more rugged and get more squarish and get mm -hmm. more uh, angular and they could get away with that with the countryman but they obviously couldn't do that with the hard top because people would throw a fit <laughs> wait until you see the off-road package it's coming i saw pictures i saw pictures of it on the press i saw camouflage in the press club and it looked and it looked pretty interesting with the knobby tires i thought yeah. I thought they're going somewhere with this, and I'm and I'm curious to see what they come up with. <laughs> yeah, it's there's there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that's coming that's I think is is going to be interesting, and I think the Countryman is an answer to a very specific market, which is the North American market. Yeah, and um, yeah, and I mean I agree with what you said, Nick. Around it, it I I don't know if I call it like for me the clear winner because I think the the J O one Cooper is really 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 nice in person yeah, and i think the, the proportions of it are it's the best proportions we've seen since mm -hmm. the r56 which um you know shorter overhangs etc uh yeah. I think that's 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 a key part of it but the other thing that i think and i've written about it again a lot on modern files that it's just the simplicity of the design the minimalism they're both yeah. you know i think they exhibit it but it's really evident on the j01 like that thing is so starkly minimal in some in some angles um the sides like there's there's no you know plastic fenders the fender flares there's no like little tack on piece of plastic with a turn signal there's just nothing and i think it's almost startling but then and then you see the the jcw body kit um which i have been meaning to post about <laughs> for like five days now um i uh if i could upload a photo i would um, <coughs> It's it's really it's really nice because you can see them they're started they're gonna be able to add things and it's not gonna look ridiculous, which I think yeah. is gonna be really beneficial. Um I will say that the for me, like it's still a disappointment that the front overhang isn't shorter. I'll just say that. Um yeah. it's, I mean it, it does look it does look like they have improved it, but it I, I would have loved more. Right? Yeah, I it's improved for that. sure, but it's not as yeah. short as and I think well, that's the problem I have because yeah. it's a skateboard chassis and yeah. they had the ability to, from a, from a, you know, greenfield, like look at this totally new and you, there's other, you know, when you think about the, the, the whole pedestrian impact standards, safety standards um, from Europe dictate that you can't have hard points so close to the front of the car, various ways I'm simplifying it. And you have the ability with an electric car to, to really move all this stuff back. Yeah. I'm sure they ran into some packaging issues because the from the cowl to the front is so short. But yeah. you know, there's other cars that have done it, and it was a little disappointing to see that. But otherwise, I love it. Even the even the rear taillights, I think they yeah. look great. And I it, it it took me seeing it in person for it to kind of come together because if you look at the the way the rear fender kind of comes together, almost like a little like a like a bottle at the end. Yeah, it kind of just effortlessly flows into those taillights, but you don't really notice that until you're next to it yeah no i did it did have really nice smooth i do agree the smooth and simple body panels on this car are, are really nice and I, I i love the hood a little bit of controversial opinion i don't mind the scoop being gone oh um, yeah i agree with you i think this hood looks really nice it looks yeah. so smooth and sleek in person it's like wow i, I have I'm, to respond to a comment by the way because yeah michael uh, Carlson mentioned, just said maybe the longer front of the J01 was a compromise for parity with the F F66. I mean, I hope not because that would be a terrible reason to, yeah. to elongate that thing. I also will say this: I, I had I've had a couple of long conversations with Oliver Himmler about about the design of these cars and specifically about the front overhang. And like I can tell you in in person, like off the record, like you, I got a very clear sense like he was doing everything he could to change it. He really was uh, he found the current state of the F f56 and he didn't say this but i picked it up pretty clearly he he was unfortunate he wished yeah. it could have been smaller and they were doing everything they could to shrink it in every possible way yeah. so 
I mean, I hope that's not the case, but see, I don't think the I don't think the F fifty six looks over. I can see what they're talking about with the long nose. I don't think it looks overly terrible, only because from a certain angle you think it's very rounded off nose wise. Then you go and actually like look at the front of the car and you stare down, and you realize it's actually blunted. It's like really flat along along the nose, but the way it's yeah. shaped, it gives that when you're standing on certain corners, it gives the impression that the nose is longer and rounded. It didn't bo- It doesn't really bother me that much. That being said, Same. if I had to pick bet- as far as shape that balances out the front and rear of the car, the four door hard top or the four door hatch actually has enough rear overhang that it balances out the front overhang enough that you don't notice it nearly as much on that car. Uh, yeah. I, I think <clears throat> the best point, the best case uh, for that example is the club. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that proportionally, I think it looks great. RIP, by the way. Yeah, uh, pulling out for the clubman. Yeah. There we go. The demise we got a, of the, the clubman. <laughs> we got a question on MSRP of the electric mini. Um, this is the new J01, which will not be coming to the United States for mm-hmm. some time. We can talk about that in a second. Yeah. In Europe, the MSRP is 32.9 in euros, which includes, and it's a different, you know, sort of. Uh, economic scenario over there like all the taxes are included a lot of things are included in that price where in the u.s it's not so it's not a one-to-one um from the u.s side that's the e which we won't get most likely the so se is the is 36.9 do you think we're going to get the sc with the jcw ex- exterior as an option oh yeah because they can charge I don't see why we wouldn't yeah well, I know, I know that they had the JCW appearance package for the longest time in the U.S., and then it suddenly just vanished. <laughs> I think that was, I think that was not a parts issue. I think it, it, it happened around the time of the J, of the LCI two. Yeah, but the U.S. the U.S. market, I think, got short got short changed sometimes when it came to the JCW appearance packages. I loathe the JCW appearance package and M Sport <laughs> appearance package. Any anything that makes a car look like it's not. Mm-hmm. Like it's something else that's not, I think is wrong. I find it offensive. See, I think I think it was I think it looked cool. I would have wanted like an F fifty six Cooper with when it had the driving modes back in the day. That with a manual and the JCW appearance package, I think would have been fun. It would have been a fun little car. I mean that that skirts my my problem with it because it's got some credibility. I used to I used to always love the original R fifty Cooper with a like a body kit and you know like an exhaust because it was just yeah. like such a. Because I think it kind of, I think that kind of harkened back to when you had the, when you had the, like the original minis with the Italian job, the R50, 50s, and 53s, the JCW aero kit that they put on those cars. So when Mm -hmm. I looked at Cooper and a Cooper S with that same aero kit on the F56, that's what it reminded me of. Mm -hmm. Because even the the first electric mini. Well, no, I'm talking about just minis. Well, yeah, the first electric mini because they use them for the Italian job. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm thinking like from the JCW appearance package general perspective, they use that on the people have complained that it's like oh it, it it cheapens the brand. But I'm like, well, they used it on the R50 and R53. They used it on the R56, mm-hmm. and they used it on the and they used it on the F56 for a while. And the JCW appearance package, the JCW appearance package is one thing. That's cosmetic. Tuning kit gives you a little bit a little bit more, and then of course factory John Cooper Works gives you everything you could possibly want out of the car mm-hmm. so i i had i've owned three different mi- three separate minis that had tuning kits on that had the jcw tuning kit on them and if, and i was never pretending it was a jcw i knew it was a t- i knew it was a cooper s with a tuning kit so it never it never bothered me i even i did on my previous one delete the cooper s badge on the back of the car but i left the jcw badge on the driver's side where the, as long the, as you it, put the badge on the other side yeah. I'm fine with it. Don't. Yeah, no. I did that intentionally so that way people don't think like, oh, he's trying to pretend it's a JCW. I'm like, no, I'm not. I yeah. left it over there. I just took off the Cooper S so I could put a number 37 right there because I wanted it there as opposed to the Cooper S badging. I mean, so, what about the new JCW logo slash badge we have there? I like it. It's I like other many's like many hasn't officially talked about it yet. I've been, yeah. I, I I'm not supposed to talk about it till November because of of them telling me that, but it's, I like it a lot. I, I hated it at first glance, I have to say, but it, it's, it's. I'm I think it, I think it'll look really good on merch. I'm looking forward to seeing that on some shirts and hats. I, I like wearing that a little bit better than the, than the surfboard one, but yeah. 
See, I yeah. like that. What's kind of cool to me, though, is it looks like it kind of repeats a little bit on the wheel design yeah. to some degree. <clears throat> and I think, the new JCW, I think the new JCW wheels look pretty pretty nice as well. What what do we what's the if while we're on the country, what's the official name for what I'm calling the blade on the back back window area oh, where, where you have badging? I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to call it blade, but do we have yeah, any official name for it that's yet? That's a good name. Um I feel like it's in my notes from that. Yeah. From that event. Yeah, um, that thing. They called it a thing. A thing. <laughs> like, Something it's a thing, all right. what it was. <laughs> yeah. I should have. It's uh, a thing, all right. What yeah. I'm I mean, also... it does it, it, in person, it looks a, a little Land Rover esque, but it looks pretty yeah. good. And then you or, can always get your roof in black, and then it just blends right in with the, with the glass. Yeah, I think that's actually that's actually true. It does look like a Land Rover. My my like cri only critique of it is it is actually a blind spot issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see it from the inside, the the, yeah. the back part of it, which is kind of a drag. I have I was like I have like a. 80 meg file of this image I was going to send you. Um, that's what, but it's what it's I was not. kind of impressed with, though, is I noticed this across the board. It looks like they've gone to fixed headrests for all the seats on the interior. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Which is something I always kind of liked. It's a, it's a, um, it's a simpler seat. It's lighter. And this is the thing that drives me crazy sometimes about BMW Mini. Like, there's so much detail that there's so many reasons why things are what they are but they don't talk about it. They don't explain it well. They don't explain it. And then the, yeah. and then, and then people are like, Oh, I don't know if we can say this. So I'm not going to say anything about it. I have, I have based, been able to figure it out through talking to folks though, that they're lighter, which is, I think, you know, a key part of this. Yeah. Um, the shape yeah. of them they're is thinner. Are they not too gay? They felt they're, like they were they're, thinner. They're thinner uh, in the back. Yeah. Yeah. They're thinner in the back, but the thing that's, interesting and and I, I like the previous jcw or sports seats whatever the jcw sports seats i think are yeah. great i love it the thigh bolster i love it i need i need it i then and, and i hate not having a thigh bolster it drives me nuts and these don't have it <clears throat> however they feel okay like the the f5350 and the i'm sorry the r50 r53 and the r56 seats were for me at least awful like I'm, you know, like <clears throat> like half my like femur was off the edge. It was they were terrible. See, there's um, only one R56 seat I actually. Better. Only one R56 seat I actually liked, and it was the one I had in my R55 JCW, and that was the Recaros. I Recaros liked them, but I had a friend who tried them out, and he had an F56 JCW, and he said that he'd always wanted to sit in those seats, and he sat in them, and he was actually disappointed. <laughs> No, they're, they're they're nice seats, but I think these are these are also they again they won't tell you this, but they're actually Recar everything's Recaro, like it's, yeah. it's made by uh, you know they were a huge supplier, tier one supplier for BMW, so the Recaro seats. Um, I don't know if they're sourced in. in I was a I was a Germany. just a little bit of purist in me, but I was a little disappointed to see, but also exciting the electric seats in the in the Cooper. Yeah, I I really don't like electric seats. It drives me nuts because it's like yeah. I, well, for obvious reasons, it's added weight, you know, like I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I also I mean, understand the fact that there's no manual transmissions anymore. I mean, someone made a comment <laughs> yeah. with the, someone made a comment with the electric seats. It's like, I like the electric seats because I can infinitely adjust the seat while I'm driving. I'm like, you could do that in manual seats. Seat yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I don't really share my, like my, you know, my, my car with anybody else. So it's not my mini at least. So I, I could care less about electric seats. For people who do so, though, I get it. It does yeah. make sense. I mean, the only time they I do have... make sense in the Countryman in that larger car. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot yeah. more room to move around. But in the Cooper, I just I, I wanted to go back to the purest of like, let's just have the manual seat there. Yeah, yeah. totally. Well, they're the same come... seats too. If people are wondering, um, yeah. So back to the seats, they're a little wider than they were before. Still have bolsters, um, decent bolsters on the side, and the bottom cushion's longer, which which is which is nice. I thought they were nice. The J01 seats with the um, the little like you know office chair armrest. Oh yeah, I, the I just the driver. surprisingly was comfortable for me. Yeah, um, and it's you know also like I'm not shifting anything in this car. Like, yeah, it's fine. I mean the current cars are awful with with manuals. Like I have to immediately move it up and just get it out of the way. Um, but as soon as you eliminate that, like you know, put an armrest anywhere, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, I mean the seats look the seats look fantastic. They're nice. What did you, Nick, what did you think? Uh, I've already expressed my <laughs> opinions on motorcycle. What did you think about the material quality? It is 
it is really good. Um, but it, it was su surprisingly better than I expected. I expected it to be a little bit looser. Uh, it, it's really tight, really well glued down, at least for now. Hopefully that holds up over time. The little strap over the glove box, why does that not a piece of elastic that we can play with and, and put things in? I, I don't know, but... It's, um, it's ridiculous, actually. Because <laughs> it, it's, I, everything about this car is very purposeful. Like, everything. Yeah. Except for that thing. That thing. And it just happens to be a thing that you stare at. Yeah. Like, in perpetuity. Because uh, so, I felt yeah. like the, the, the third spoke of the wheel, the bottom spoke of the wheel, which is this, almost the same material as that, had a little bit of give and flex to it. And it's like, wow, why couldn't they just, you know, not sew down or glue down the entire sides of that. But otherwise, that interior dash, it feels really nice. Um, I don't think it'll be as hot on hot summer days too. I think it'll do a little bit better with absorbing or reflecting the heat. Yeah. The so, be hotter, but, yeah, the dash yeah. is, I think is a lot of people are freaking out about the cloth dash or whatever you want to call it. Textile. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, I think it's actually great. Um, a, it's not going to be as hot. B, um, it's just interesting and different. C it's recycled yeah. and it can be recycled. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think it's all, it's to me, it's a win, win The I'm sure people, are freaked out about the the pattern and that's fine. There's other versions of it. There's other options right there. Yeah. The strap, I've, I'm convinced that that was a functional concept. And yeah. They well, lost it, it somehow. And, you know, like as they got into production or something. Ignore the right. cat sitting here. He just wanted to sit in my lap. Apparently. <laughs> that's really, <laughs> well, I just saw a black figure coming at you. Um, all right. We got a question. How do you clean it though? Damp cloth. Yeah, just wipe it. Really, yeah, that's the that's the thing that they kept on saying too, and they and they tested this. It's essentially, like based on and BMW has super rigorous tests testing for materials, like ridiculously so. Supposedly, this is um, more robust than the foam, meaning it can expand and contract mm -hmm. better, so it won't crack in ten years, and it doesn't get as hot, and it's easier yeah. to clean. Supposedly, we don't have. But my concern is. It was a little coarser. I mean, it's kind of like a waffle knit mm -hmm. uh, texture to it. It's a little coarser than I thought it would be, but I mean, you could just vacuum it up. I mean, it's you treat it the same as you would any other cloth or carpety material. You know, <coughs> vacuum yeah. it up and then, like you said, wipe it wipe it off with, with a damp cloth. Don't spray anything in there. But just the it. only thing that I was a little uh, kind of concerned me from the cloth perspective is there was a uh, the well the car the J O one that I spent a lot of time in had that off white like light gray door mm -hmm. panel interior, which mm -hmm. I mean, I can just assume is going to get dirty. And again, yeah. like it shouldn't be a big deal. You can just wipe it down. Um, but you know, that just feels like it will. The one thing people were definitely freaking out about is that center spoke in the steering wheel. And I know some of I remember reading a comment on learning file, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to like catch my ring on it and it's going to snag. You're not going to snag this thing. Like it's, no. One of the most robust, thick pieces of like textile, yeah, I've ever seen. <clears throat> no, I mean, my only concern with that maybe over time, if you if you were constantly fidgeting with it, you know, if you pushed and pulled on it while you drive, maybe you could stretch it out a little bit so it wouldn't be as ten as as tense as taut. Mm -hmm. But I think that's an edge case, right? Not everybody's going to be sitting there playing with that spoke the entire time. Um, mm -hmm. And if you do that, that's that's on you. Get a new wheel. Yeah, that's your problem. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. I'm just going to keep asking or answering questions. Yeah. Here. There's a couple of good ones here. Okay. So this is a serious question. Uh, and it is a serious question. Uh, so this person is getting a 2024 Cooper SE with, you know, current range, which is like anywhere from 110 to 130, depending on how, mm -hmm. what you're, you know, what you experience. So in a few years, when the, when the J01 comes out in the U S I'm guessing that's what, um, where this person's from. Well, my car essentially be worth be, be worthless. I mean, I think it's an interesting question i think you know are you gonna take a hit like i think i think an electric car like it's a little bit of a gamble and it, well, any car is in electric cars right now there's no question like the ice cars the you know the sort of innovation curve is like this with electric cars it's like this yeah and so inevitably if it's like this and you're here then yeah you're gonna you're gonna lose more money I, I mean, I think even these JO1s will lose money when eventually solid state batteries become a thing. Solid you know, BMW batteries. is investing heavily in that. So are other places. Toyota announced we'll have something in 2026 in production soon. 
So at that point, these will plummet as well because those those newer versions with solid state batteries are going to yeah double the range again. Am I am I you know sort of like fictional like (laughs) fictional daydreams? Like I'd like to think there's going to be like retrofit battery packs Mm -hmm. of solid state. You know where you can. Pop off the skateboard. Increase, and put in the new you one. Can, yeah, you can increase range by thirty percent. Just yeah. you know, go down to your local shop and have them like pop them in. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if it's that simple, but I agree with you though. I think I think that ultimately, once we get to, I mean, we're going to see like crazy amounts of innovation yeah. for like I don't know my lifetime. Like it's it in, in this space, it's going to be it's going to be pretty wild. And then I think ultimately you'll see stuff start to level out. Yeah. But you know, you you also get into the whole notion of uh, fuel cells and, and other things you're buying something you need it just enjoy it yeah. um i you know i i think it's it's totally normal to worry about that stuff i know i do but sure uh, try not to think about it the other thing too and i actually uh, a good friend of mine just bought one and, I, and the way I, I i i told him made him feel better about his purchase because he asked the same question listen you're investing in an electric car right now all of them are bad investments all mm-hmm. of them you're making the smallest bad investment of any of them <laughs> by buying a mini. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's like, you're not going to lose that much money. I mean, go talk yeah. to somebody who is buying a $150,000 BMW iX in yeah. five years. Like that's, yeah. that's a legit investment problem. Right. But, you know, and it's not a very good looking car anyway. So <laughs> you'll be fine. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great car. The iX anyway. Um, I had a quick question with solid state bat with solid. You're talk, we were talking about solid state batteries. I knew many. I knew BMW is working on this. Um, yeah. Do you think that we already know that the range is pretty much doubled between the F56 based electric and the J01 based electric? Do we think that there's a possibility that it's going to double again with solid state potentially? I mean, from eventually, yes. From what we know now on solid state technologies, I don't think it will quite double, but it will get very close to, to doubling again, and then also reducing size, weight, and yeah, charging times. So, you know, that's the those are the main benefits of the solid states that they don't have that liquid between them, which is heavy and bulky, and then you know reduces charging times yeah. because you can't heat it up too much. I think that's a big. I think there's yeah. I think you hit on a lot of it. I well, I I know I've read like the 30 percent ish in terms of yeah. Like, density per you know same size but to your point i think reducing the weight mm-hmm. is key also increasing charging t- or i'm sorry decreasing charging time is key right and then the other variable you mentioned the the heating and cooling like the different weather like it's just less susceptible to yeah. uh range issues with with cold weather and then the other thing people don't talk about which you know i hate to bring up is we are kind of sitting on a bomb you know driving lithium ion batteries around yeah. Much like we're sitting on a bomb when we drive an ice vehicle around. Right. Solid state is just inherently safer. And yeah. that's something that, again, people don't talk about, but I think ultimately when it, by the time it comes out, I think people will be much more aware of that. Yeah. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the, when we get to that point, we see ranges similar. Like right now I can get about 300 miles of range out of my JCW, which is lower than I wanted, than I was expecting, but it is a John Cooper work. So it's given, give, give and take there. But if I could see a range on a on a car with a solid state battery increase to on the mini anyway, increase to three fifty for example, because that's an average for a Cooper S or something like that. But see a but see like the charging time decrease to not quite. We're probably never going to get close to filling in the tank up with gas. But if we come to the point where it's like 10, 15, 20 minutes, something like that, or whatever or whatever it needs, maybe that would make them even more maybe maybe that would make an electric car a bit more viable for majority of people mm-hmm. out there yeah i mean I, I think that's feasible if if you get roughly like it's at a 30 percent increase in range for the same size battery in, in in the car you could definitely see it creep up to the 300 range um and yeah. and yeah i don't think it's ever going to get to be charging charging in the five minutes it takes to fill a tank but that's what the games on the inside are for now we can play some games to uh <laughs> pass a few, so, few minutes it'll get down to like you know 25 15 to 20 minutes no, i'm sure well i know so i know great- I know a way to get around this. What we need to do is just, sorry, I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. (laughs) I was going to say, I I should take that and segue into the interior, but I'm not, because that that would be a great one. Um, I do think though, it's the speed of the charging. That's the limiting factor for, for in my experience, at least uh, having driven a ton of electric cars, like that's the major issue. Not necessarily. Well, there's two speed of the charging and a charging network that actually, so that would be helpful. Um, that though is going to change. It's not going to get like 
two minutes and I'm full, but it will get to the point. And you can see in some of the, um, specifically in China, because I, they're, they're really bleeding edge in a lot of cases. I mean, you're getting 10 to 80%, like literally you're at 10% to 80% in like three minutes. So it, it is coming with, with yeah. 800, 900 volt architecture, which many in BMW, BMW do not have, by the way. Yeah. Um, but Porsche and VW have a platform that allows for it. You can, have, you can sort of see the writing on the wall where it's going to go. Now, I was going to say there is a way we could we could make do with the 30 to 40 minute uh, uh, charging times. Just make every single gas station along the highway a Bucky's. Problem <laughs> solved. <laughs> Is that a is that a is that a Kansas City reference? <laughs> no, that is a that a is Bucky. a gas a Bucky's. That is a gas station chain in the in like Texas and Tennessee. Okay. It's like it's this bit. You have to you'll have to look it up. Then it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Walmart style, it's, size store at every gas yeah. station. Okay, Basically, okay, a Walmart it. with a gas station attached to it. <laughs> okay, cool. I just went to my first one on Route 66 when we did the minis on Route 66, so I got my first experience. It was it was quite a bit. That's I went cool. to my first one going to go into Co- when I went to Coda it, yeah. for one of the ra- one of the races with the team, and uh, I was like, "Wow, this is <laughs> it was it was insane." And then the, I, and then I went and saw the biggest one in Texas, which was I, I mean I've never seen a gas station that large. It was just it was yeah, it was just crazy. What do, but, you, uh, what do you guys think about the timing of the electric mini here? Like this, and we've had the electric mini before with the SE, mm-hmm. but this new platform. I'm, I'm, I'm personally kind of quite pleased. It's like, we're not too early. We're not Tesla early. We're not, you know, mm-hmm. um, setting the groundwork for it, but we're not waiting too long where it's too late. Right. I, I'm, I'm some other car brands. I feel like are waiting too long. I, I feel like mini's in the sweet spot. I would like, like to have seen it maybe two years earlier. Um, I have mixed I, feelings I, on that. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'll say this. I think a lot of people inside BMW do as well. Um, having yeah. talked to a bunch of them. I mean, BMW had an incredible opportunity. Um, they shut down their F1 team in 2008. Yeah. You know, like they literally took the, those engineers and moved them into BMW i. And what came out of it was the first Mini E, which was a con, right. which is a you know what whatever a rolling test bed. <clears throat> had they, um, and I'm going to say something. I don't think I've ever written about it um, before either. It's kind of interesting. Had they put that money into a viable electric car that wasn't the B- the BMW i3, which by the way, I love to death. I think that thing is amazing. It's a rear wheel drive, carbon fiber monocoque yeah. chassis, you know. I mean, that's what the Mini was testing car. for, for that i3 powertrains. Yeah, so I mean, it's like, I love that car so much. Anyway, um, it is, uh, so had they created something that was a <coughs> product, like a mass market product, like a, like a Tesla i3 or, um, model three, whatever, I think they would have crushed it. And I think had they then taken that technology and poured it into a mini, the, 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 the reality is mini could have owned the whole concept of an electric brand for an urban environment. And it would have been really interesting. And there's a lot of people inside BMW that really do feel like it was a huge miss. And this is the thing that I don't think I've ever written about before, but I do know this is, this is fact from several people have told me they actually took an i3 and they rebodied it as a mini and they thought about bringing it to market as the very first mini e um, yeah. and they decided against it because the proportions weren't right and i've always thought oh, man that would have been awesome. see what that would have looked like that would have been phenomenal yeah I, I do wish like i said i do wish they'd come a little bit earlier and they have like you said have been toying with this for a while with, yeah. with the i3 and not in the test bed mini but I, I am glad that it's happening now rather than later, um, like some other yeah. brands. Were, yeah, and I think they have to. I mean, you know, the, the reality is, well, a couple of reasons. I mean, number one, BMW needs to sell as many electric cars as possible to meet the regulations in Europe. Right. Many offers them that for a few reasons. I mean, number one, it's an urban brand, typically younger, more urban-minded people or whatever, how you want to phrase it, are earlier adopters of technology like this. So it makes sense. Like, everything just sort of just makes sense. The problem with that is it works in a lot of environments like Munich, London, you know, New York, and even Chicago. But for a giant country like the United States or Brazil, you know, it doesn't work. Like it's hard to make it work in rural or sort of suburban environments because of the distances we travel so much. Right. That's why there's, there's an F66. Like Mm -hmm. that is the reason. 
because sure. they were really considering going all in on electric and not having an F66. But right. that was a, um, I think, a pretty smart move. And it's the first time ever that BMW has taken a car and refreshed it and called it a new car. So, I mean, I'm going to be really fascinated to see how they they, they market the new Ice Mini um, because, I mean, it is, it's going to be, you know, an F56, which debuted, by the way, in 2013. Yeah. And if you read Motor Info, it's going to be, the last one will be produced 1231, 2030. Oh, nice. 17 years run. of production. That's a long run for a platform. Yeah. Now I know that um, we're. T I have the I have the electric mini up on the screen. Uh, uh, Nick and I have been talking about this. When they bring it to the U.S., it'll be as an LCI, most likely. That'll probably be their. That'll probably be their mid-cycle refresh when they finally bring it over. To the trying, what? To the F? No, it's going to be all new car. The J01 will be an all new car. F oh, <laughs> I'm talking about the. I thought you said the F66. No, 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 no not F not F66. I was talking about J01. When oh, they when bring they bring it to the United States. When they bring it to the United States, I heard they were going to bring it as an. L it would probably be an LCI of the of the car. They'll do a yeah. That's what. That, I, 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 yeah. I, sorry, I misunderstood. Um, yeah, yeah I, I've written that. I, I wrote that in Motor File based on um, a, a, a source I had last year. What was it this year? Um, I would say that's not verified for sure, but I do think it's a. I, th I think it's a probability. The reality is, and this is what BMW has done for decades. When they bring some to the United States, it may be delayed, but they will make updates based on what they've seen because they recognize that the United States is a different kind of market different. with a different yeah. type of expectations, good or bad. And and so I, I think that if it's a formal LCI or just a series of improvements, I mean, the way BMW works is at least in European production, not in China, but every um, several months. So, you know, in March, July or November are changeover production. So they add new parts they add essentially revisions to products during that time period. Mm -hmm. So they don't talk about it, but there are constant tweaks and revisions each one of those time periods every single year. Some of them you notice, some of them you don't. And the LCI is accumulation of a lot of them and mm -hmm. usually visible. Funny thing about funny thing about that, um, I was remember talking, I was talking to someone about that. He had a 2014 uh, Cooper S and we were looking at his car one day and we were like, the sun visors are different than my oh, car. Yeah. My car was like a 2017. And like, what happened to the visors? The, like, the visors were different. We found out the rear window and the hatch was different. It's like they, it's like they designed the car and then the following year they tweaked it. <laughs> right. Yeah. They make a lot of iterative tweaks that they don't even mention. Uh, no, you don't mention them, but when you look at the two cars side by side, you start right. to notice. Or you go to order a, a like, part. This different. <laughs> order a part to replace it or, you know, uh, some sort of cover that doesn't quite fit it anymore. And yeah. then you recognize, Oh, they changed the mirror. Yeah. So you, yeah. You go to your, your, your parts counter to order something like, is this a, you yeah. know, March, <laughs> you know, March 21 <laughs> build or before. Yeah. Um, that's what I had. To, that's what I had to do with my R53. I had to, when I, when I was ordering parts for they would, I would say, is it a pre, is it a pre September or pre uh, July two, two, yeah. 2006? Or is it a post July 2006? I'm like, what's the difference? So like, well, one more, one more JCW parts were used on it. If it's a, if it's post, if it's post two thousand or July, and the other one, it has the smaller wheel bolts and the smaller brakes and all this other stuff. I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. So, start to learn that your car is kind of this transition car that was built using leftover parts apparently because they were already going into the R56 when they, when they built it. <clears throat> I have good so, news. Uh, my friends I'm supposed to meet are running late, so I'm sticking around. <laughs> nice. <laughs> kind of chill. Um, I'm, I'm going through the questions. There's some funny ones. Uh, the last one, I want to see an S in Factory JCW. This, I, I don't know. I don't know. Factory JCW. Yeah, this, I don't know if he's referring to the photo that's up or not. Um, this is actually an S. This is a, 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 a technically an SE. Um, and then the JCW will be coming. They have not mentioned it yet, but it will be coming. Can we I talk about this for one quick minute. second? This, I can go this. to Mini Deutschland and I could sure. probably pull up a picture of the. Don't go yet, Zach. I want to. I want to ask a question about this. The same thing I asked you. Do we, Gabe? Do you know if the U.S. model has side markers? Because it, that's it's what we law have side markers. I don't see the side markers on the on the on the wheel wells anywhere. The marker yeah. lights on the wheel archers, Yeah. So the way I so I'm this is my assumption. I don't know for sure, but I will say yeah. that the way BMW typically does it 
is there are different bumpers for us and it's all yeah. one thing and they'll have they'll have them kind out. of you know on the radius of the which is uh, which is a bummer because like i love how clean like yeah. say, clean and simple these are and now we've got to cut a hole in them same thing with the gp3 like yeah. i hate the yeah. fact that this split you know these spats have a cutout yeah. for a marker light on them and i and always funny i should just order the european ones because we don't need them for inspections in new york right we just need them to be sold from the manufacturer that way but it's yeah. it's funny because i remember way back in the day and this is god this is like when i had my r53 i remember a guy from the uk wanting to buy the us ones because they and i it's just like i i, I do i i, I, the, I had someone ask the, about that the clean look i agree with you but i do think there's also a little semblance of like i want what i cannot have you know yeah. always have it in but i but i agree though like it is it is a bummer i mean you know i don't i don't think it's gonna ruin anything but it's it's obviously yeah people will want to smoke them out <laughs> they're gonna absolutely want to like, or you, could, or you could do what, or you could do what I did. My 2017 Cooper S, I blacked them out. I just had I had Todd wrap them in black vinyl and just cover them up completely. <laughs> well, now well, now that they'll be in the actual body uh, sheet metal itself, you could probably just use a vinyl wrap as opposed yeah, to plastic yeah. arches where it didn't quite match. You know, you couldn't match the texture. Now now you could do this with a 3M vinyl wrap and you'd have to really you'd have to really match the color though to get. Yeah, it. you got to get the correct color, which this blue in person is phenomenal looking. And so is so is the countryman. Both of those paint jobs are. Yeah, know. I actually saw. I have a, a press photo of the of the smoky smoky green mm. in the in the J O one. Yeah, it's a cool color. Yeah. I have, um, I have I have a lot of stuff I need to post. I have yet to have time. There you so go. There, there's the JCW trim Cooper S E. Mm -hmm. Which we all thought was going to be a higher horsepower uh, JCW electric, and now it appears it was it was a it was a JCW trimmed. That no, that will be the the JCW is going to look very similar to it. Okay, well they're going to build. Are you saying they're going to build an electric JCW, or saying that the F sixty six JCW is going to have some similar features to this? Well, both actually. Okay. <laughs> so there's going to be there's a there's, a, there's an electric JCW coming a J O one. The the look of that car will be similar to this. Okay. So I am because I have seen the new wheels on this car on the F sixty six JCW or Cooper yep. S whatever was running around the Nurburgring. Yep. There's some camo JCW. Uh, yeah, I think I think there's one on learning file, and so the JCW of that car will have the same split. So what I've been told is you're going to see like that is going to be the same. The rear is going to be the same as well. So there's going to be a lot of similarity there. There and you know. <laughs> it makes sense when you look at the the JCW trim or body kit or whatever we want to call it that's available or was available on Cooper S's and Coopers, whatever. It's the same kit, you know, it looks the same, which again, like I personally have a problem with. I like to see some separation there, but um, I mean, I want to, for me, like I look at a JCW and I think I want it to be an M car. I want, I want like the shell to be different. I want the fenders to be boxed. I want something to be different like the car behind you nick i think yeah, that's, like that's but, the I, i've read about or I've, I've written about this before i mean and I've, in fact i've seen it i've been to the testing center in the nurburgring they they really treat the jcw well good news m engineers are actually engineering these cars so nice there you go that's cool i've seen him and talked to him so they're actually engineering the jcw products which is awesome however in their category of way they the way they look at it is they're they're sort of along the lines of or they're they're equivalent to like a an uh, an in-performance car from a BMW perspective, which is to say that it's it's not a completely new suspension design. It's just improved suspension for more, as the Germans say, dynamic ride. Um, you know, improved things and things that are massaged essentially, versus an M car, which is like straight up new bespoke suspension, <clears throat> different engine, like everything is completely different. Um, I think that's like. You know, and I get it. Like it's it the price point couldn't handle that because then you'd be looking at a, you know, a, a hatch, a JCW hatch. It's probably sixty five thousand dollars. But could you imagine a bespoke JCW hatchback that had like the pedigree of like an M of like an yeah. M three M four? That would just be that would just be insane. I mean, they'd probably strip out the rear seats, like the yeah. engineers, Nick, and they would probably do a new, a new suspension, and they'd probably you know, radically change the engine. But, well, I don't. Th I, I just don't think it. Actually, now I think about it, it, probably wouldn't be as special. The GPS are always the special, the special ones out of mm -hmm. all the, out of all the models. So if you had that ability to have that all the time, it would probably well, make or it or the GP would be even more. 
Right. Oh, there you go. But <clears> so I, like I, the, GP, the GP would be like a uh, the GP would become all wheel drive, yeah, like an M3 exactly. CS. It'd be like the M3 CS, the, yeah. the GP3. But it's yeah. a. I, but to answer the question earlier, I mean they're they're gonna they, you know at least like the the kind of the the knowing looks when I asked the question certainly told me that they're gonna have another GP. Yeah. Um, they're gonna do a. At the time, they were not convinced they were going to be doing a uh, an ICE GP. It was going to be a, a an EV only, but we'll see. I mean, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now we did. Now we did see you showed pictures on your on your site. I'm using your site. I'm using the motor file for a lot of my references here. Hey, great. <clears throat> Just because you got a lot of information, it becomes very useful. I've even used I've even used it for references when I'm doing videos. Uh, Anytime. <laughs> Yeah, but this is either I think based on what I saw, this was either a Cooper S or a JCW That's running around. JCW. Server, right? Yeah. What was interesting about it is I looked closely enough at these photos and some other photos, and I can't tell if it's cam if they just camouflaged it really well, but it looks like the hood scoop's completely gone on these cars. I noticed that too. <laughs> I think that they're getting rid of the hood scoop entirely, and I think that there's a couple of things they're doing that I think are really interesting. I mean, for one, they're adhering to the J O one design language, like like really through and through uh for good or bad you know i think it's good but um you know there you go the other thing is they're in and what gives it away is the scoops on the side because it does it really truly yeah. does need that um extra cooling yeah. um but the other thing is like they're you know even down to the rear taillights i mean people aren't gonna like it but they're changing the rear taillights in the S on the f56 for the f66 and it will look just like the j01 with with one exception I haven't written about it on Motor Ball yet, but I'll say it. The F67 convertible is going to have the old lights mm. because they couldn't get the new lights on that tailgate <clears throat> to fit. To fit. Exactly. Weird. That's going to be a, that'll be a cool thing to talk about on, on some videos when we get some some f67 convertibles like they have the old tail lights on them <laughs> yeah the, the you're not going to see anything probably until God, <clears throat> maybe late fall or early spring for spy photos but yeah um, now i did see yeah. some photos uh that nick posted of of the tail lights the different modes from oh, the tail because yeah. i remember when i first saw the tail lights i'm like they're going to do something with those with those with yeah. that grid pattern it's cool and sure enough you can you have like three different variations for the headlights tail lights to come I mean, three, it's nice. The three are cool, but like, I want to hack into it and do some weird yeah. stuff. You know? I mean, I'm, sure Motor, I'm sure, I'm sure Beamer code will. Beamer code will let you do that soon. Code, sure I didn't, I didn't expect it to be a, a corresponding front setup as with, with the back one. So that was a nice surprise. Um, so, yeah. I think it looked, yeah. cool. I think it looked really cool, but it made, yeah. the, it made, it made sense when I, when I saw those different dry, the light modes, it made sense when I saw the, Headlights lit up on the JCW Clubman or Countryman, and I was trying to figure out yeah. why they were split like yeah. that. Yeah, the, the three separate zones. Yeah, we had, yeah, I had written about that in Motor File that because um, the taillights in the back, you, it was clear you could understand the different versions. But I had also been told the front will have the same. I had written about it, but I could, I never could figure out. I mean, really, what the hell that actually meant until I got to see these cars and realized, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's the you know, sort of the, the daytime running light signature that changes. So this is the JCW Countryman. Correct. This is the petrol version. Mm -hmm. um, this is this is cool. This is, I can't say, I wish I could say more about this. It's coming <laughs> sooner than you think. And um, I'm pretty excited to, to be hands on with it. See, it's fun to have someone on, on the channel who knows more than he can, than he can tell. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. I mean, the only thing I ever work with is like, as I had in, I had some insiders who worked in the plant who would tell me who would tell me certain things about the cars that they were that were being developed. Like, I knew certain paint colors were being done. I knew when the mul the different multi tone roofs that were coming out. That's, um, that's cool. One of my first sources I ever had was was in the plant, which is kind of funny. Ironically, the last I I confirmed the 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 date, um, the production date, the end of production date multiple ways the first the first time i did it was a year ago actually when i visited the plant and i could see the mm. codes on some of the products and and some of the you know some of the i shouldn't say this a couple other places and i could <laughs> see when that when it ended um i didn't write about it because i didn't want to be 
I don't know. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to get too far out of it, but yeah, you don't um, want to get yourself to the point where you lose your lose your sources. <laughs> but it, it's a. It, I mean, you know, it's it. This is a huge company, and they they do have to plan. And it's crazy yeah. to think about it, but they're planning like seven, like seven years three, out, five, right? seven, ten year increments, you know, yeah. or more. And it, it's it's so, wild. It's cool. So if that's the case, this car probably was designed two years ago, and they're and they're now more than that. Yeah. More than that. I mean, they, they designed the J01. I'm trying to think of when I, um, 20, probably 2019 is when it was finalized. Like the, the main part, the exterior or, or 2020 perhaps. Well, what was funny about the J01 is I remember I was trying to figure out what the shape of the car would look like. So I took a picture of it and I put the test cars, I put it up on PowerPoint night or not PowerPoint. Yeah, it was PowerPoint. I traced around it and like got the body lines and everything. And I think I ended up nailing it because I was looking at the production car. I'm like, yeah, I pretty much got it <laughs> just by tracing the silo, the what I could see from this spy photo. But yeah. <clears throat> what was interesting is I looked at the car and I thought it was going to be smaller. And I found out it's probably about they said it looked roughly an inch longer. It's not, car. yeah, not quite, but it, it's a fractionally longer. And I think it, it, ha it has to do with the bumpers more than anything. Yeah. Um, but the wheelbase is also longer too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they did that. But what's funny is when they, when we're talking about the, we're talking about the countryman got bigger, they say, Oh, the countryman got longer. And they, and this is how you can tell that a lot of Americans don't understand the metric system when they say, Oh, it's 13 centimeters longer, 13 centimeters, 13 centimeters is about six inches. <laughs> yeah. It did, and it, it really didn't feel much bigger in person than yeah. the current, F, F generation. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, wouldn't you think, don't you think the purport, oh, I mean, I'm leading the witness when I say this, but like, at least <laughs> for me, I thought the proportions were so much better in this yeah. one that you're yeah. right. It didn't, doesn't feel larger necessarily. No, I mean, I, I saw it getting, getting lifted up from the second, you know, a basement level on a crane and it looked exactly the same size as the current generation. And so I had to go up next to it. And once I was up next to it, then I noticed the roof line is a little bit taller. Like I can, I can almost see over my R60. This one was taller. I couldn't see over it. So it, it, it doesn't feel any larger. Like you said, the proportions have really made it feel about the same size as the current F series cars. Um, and, and if you, if you do want smaller, like us mini purists that want smaller, I'm really looking forward to seeing that ace and what that final product is going to look like. Cause that is, R60 size to a T almost. I, I, I really like the Aceman a lot. Yeah. I think the, the, the rub for me with the Aceman is it has the exact same drivetrain as the J01, which means mm. it's going to be slower, have less range. Range, yeah. You know, it, it, I, you know, in the US, like that, it does matter. I mean, yeah. We have long distances <laughs> but will it be, will it be, the thing is will it be competitive with the other with other with other small electric crossovers in that market yeah it's not it's, really electric crossover it's more like a, it's more like just an electric four-door hatch to some degree i'm really enjoying this comment from from vg ace americans also didn't like the the, the the third, the third pound, pound burger, burger. is they thought it was less meat than of course. I will argue that it's the people that are eating that, those Americans didn't like it. I think <laughs> there are other Americans who actually understand that. But yes, I get your point. I think that's hilarious. Well, because you look at even numbers, you think the numbers as good as as bigger than odd numbers, which they would, except fractions don't work that way. So but it's just it's just there's stuff like that's just that's funny. But, uh, Wait till they try and convert WTLP range to EPA range. Oh yeah, that's always interesting too. It's uh, like, oh, WTLP range. Is, oh, it's going to have 250 miles of range. Yeah, it's about 210. It, it's not too far. I mean, I, I don't know. I think <laughs> I, I I hate that we don't have one global standard. By the way, I'm going to read yeah. some comments because they're kind of funny. So, uh, did you know that the Rolls Royce that Rolls Royce cars use many parts? Sorry, that use many parts on the Phantom. There's some spelling errors there, but that's cool. I also struggle with spelling at times. Uh, yes, they do, but they're very minimal. And and when I say minimal, it's like the cigarette blend, like the cigarette light or whatever, the a, a power switch, like the auxiliary power switch. It's the same part design, but in the Rolls Royce, it's clear. It's like a matte clear, which is kind of cool. Um, 
and there there are some very very small parts that are shared um i'm told across a lot of bmws as well but there's some software that's shared too because you can set your animation to be oh, this yeah. royce bmw any of those and those chimes so i set my chimes to the rolls royce ones they're very elegant and soft get, i used to do that as well yeah. i've never been able to get my chimes to go to, I've, I've set chimes my chimes in my car to rolls royce i've never been able to get it to work it would just not make a sound at all oh it sounds oh. it sounds great are the drl right. taillight options separately configurable are they paired I believe they're paired. I don't actually, I've not done it yet. So I don't know. I would assume they're, they're probably paired that. given that it's a drive. It looks like it's probably like, is it a, is it linked to driving modes or is it just, you can change them to whatever you happen to like. You can change them. They're independent. Um, okay. Where's the Aceman name come from? Yeah. I mean, it's, I love, I love the, the folks who are, I shouldn't say this. Like I, the people are running many cause I'm about to make fun of them are awesome. They're incredibly intelligent. They're hardworking. They're so committed. I think they're wonderful. Most of them are German. English is not their first language. And there have been some problems because of that. Namely the untamed edition countryman that's sitting outside right now, which I think is the most hilariously bad name of all time. Aceman is, you know, born out of that as was the paceman. Yeah. Um, neither are very good names. I think the Countryman's a great name. I'm going to go on record and say I love it. The Clubman, amazing. I think it's yeah. a great name. Aceman, I don't know. Well, see, I heard that the Clubman name when it was launched, it was because they, when they bought Rover, they didn't get the rights to the name Traveler. Traveler is owned by Honda in some uh, markets. Yeah. So they ended up having to call it the Clubman. Now, most classic Mini owners associate the name Clubman with the square-nosed, classic-shaped oh, Mini right. that, you, that you used to see. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, I'm glad we don't have crossover here in the in the U.S. market. Yeah. I do appreciate or, countrymen. You can get the lettering. For, you can get the lettering for crossover, though. We found uh, don't that want out. to. I'm good. <clears throat> we found out you can get the lettering. So <laughs> my countryman is de-lettered anyway, so I'm all set. Yeah. But what was funny, anyway, back to what was funny about the Clubman is uh, I have arguments. I've, I've had arguments with people on this because it was the R55 Clubman, and then it went, then it was the F54, F54 Clubman. Well, there was a year where there was no Clubman at all. So effectively, as I told people, the Clubman was discontinued, replaced by the F55 four door hardtop. And then the following year, they launched the F54 Clubman as a brand new, brand new model. And I get people arguing with me that all the time, but that's how I look at it. I know that it's like the name going forward, mm -hmm. but I see it as a chassis progression because like R56, F56, R57, F57, R55, F55. So people want to people want to argue about all the time, but that's just how I that's just how I see it based on the chassis cut designations. <clears throat> I will say the I, the one thing. I, well, go ahead, Nick. No, that no, it's not important. Go for it. Uh, I was just gonna say just I'm, because I'm, I I do have to I do have to jet in a couple of minutes here. Unfortunately, yeah. um, the so there's a lot I'm looking forward to. The thing I'm really looking forward to is the car right there on screen. Um, I'm looking forward to driving that and getting really kind of like understanding what it feels like comparatively to the JCW, the current JCW. I've had three of them over the mm -hmm. past like four years. It's going to be interesting. More ho horsepower, a lot less torque, um, more weight. <laughs> I, mean, a sl a, I mean, a transmission we don't know yet, but we know that DCT is actually slower shifting than the ACE and 8-speed that was in this car right now. I mean, I don't want to make the assumption it's going to be slower unless, I don't know, JCW like, but it might be. Um, doesn't mean it's not going to be a better car, but that is a little concern. And I said it the other the other day too. Like I, I hold to the fact that I think the the JCW Clubman, current one you can buy right now, will be the fastest ever ice mini, unless they do some crazy special edition of this of this car as they amp up the power because the thing that that didn't come out which i've been told is is in the works on the bmw side is a 330 horsepower version of that engine with mild high you, yeah and and so i mean that's bound to happen and i would assume that many would put that in here i still don't know if it's gonna be as fast as the clubman the jcb clubman just because the weight is different um, yeah but it'll it'll be interesting to see and I know experience going around the track with uh, Christian in that JCW Clubman of theirs. That thing is 
the thing is fun and incredibly mm-hmm. fast. It's like it's a very unassuming. Yeah, it's well. The great thing about the club and on the track, I mean, I've 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 done thermal in California. I've done the mm-hmm. Performance Center in South Carolina in that car. I've done Autobahn in Chicago. It is really progressive. Like it's the most neutral of all minis I think ever I've ever driven on. I've, I think I've driven all of them on the track. Um, it is the most neutral, like as in like at the limit, like it's super controllable. It's just it's really really nice. Like it's not. I remember going um nose to tail with a jet with a with a f56 jcw driven by uh, uh lewis actually mm-hmm. at, in thermal and that car would would walk away from me on the straights oh wait is that right yeah it would it would but i would get i would get it in the corners because the traction coming out of the corners was so great in that clubman yeah you get a thermal in the, the back stretch i remember seeing that thing just kind of just do this a little bit because it's lighter it's accelerating faster, you know, mid range. Yeah. Um, but that clubman would just come after it. It was amazing how fast that car was. That car doesn't seem like it should go that fast, and it doesn't feel like you're going that fast. And then you look down, and you're like, "Wow, I'm buck thirty right now in a club. I mean, and I think a lot of people who, like a lot of a lot of people who have lived and died by the R53, etc., like they, they look at the club and they're like, "That looks like an appliance. It sounds like an appliance. It doesn't sound." But it's it's fast. It's yeah. fun. Like it's a different type of engagement, but it's so fun. I do have a good question here. I want to pop in Sal Salerno. Considering the existence of the Volkswagen GTI, why is the four door without a JCW? Mm-hmm. I can tell <laughs> you the reason it's not very satisfying. Um, they did not engineer that car to have any JCW components to it. And so while it wouldn't be that much of a lift, they don't believe with their limited resources, it makes sense to retrofit that car to the point where they could have a JCW drivetrain and bigger brakes, et cetera, which shouldn't be a big deal, but mm-hmm. it's still money. It still has to go through, like they still have to test the thing in, in the Arctic circle. They still have to crash test it in three continents. They still, you know, they have to do all this sh- stuff. Um, they just don't think that the market is big <clears throat> enough. And this is critical. They have the car that you're looking at right here, which, They'll sell you and they make a lot more profit on. Yeah. I don't know. I think a four door JCW would be kind of entertaining. I've seen someone, there is someone I know in Kansas City, know of in Kansas City. He bought a four door with JCW appearance package. He then had the tuning kit put on it and he had the the JCW brakes put on it. And then I think he added a dine and tune to it. So effectively, he created, he built his own JCW four door. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I, I I have a tough time with that car. I think it's it's the only Mini that's ever been made that I just can't. I just don't like the look of it. It does have it does have it does have reduced blind spots from my perspective. When I've looked back to my corner to while I'm turning, I'm like, oh, I can see right out that window perfectly. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> I, I also can't like just the doors are so small. I can't have a hard time. Yeah, the doors are definitely been a problem for me. I remember at one point, I think they changed the shape of the weather strip or the belt line on the car because i remember it used to have like a angle on it and i do remember a four-door cutting my hand once when i went to grab the door and i caught the edge of the uh belt line mm-hmm. and then like a year later they changed it and it was more of a squared off mm-hmm. end of the belt line instead of this angle and i'm like well when they do that <laughs> that makes sense I, I i get a lot of grief for this but i'm not a fan of the four-door i mm-hmm. it, it, now that it's you know the clubman is dying off. I'm even more salty over that. I, you know, I, I agree. I there there are four doors on the countryman and the clubman. Get you know by those. I um, totally but agree. They, but not. then I see it out on the road all the time. I'm like, no, why are you why are you buying this car? You're you're helping the take rate go up. Stop doing well, this. Yeah, I don't. No, oh, I don't know. I mean, I'm yeah. sure I'm. I don't want to be offensive, but I totally <laughs> agree. I mean, the clubman to me is is like a little bit bigger for dramatically more utility. Oh yeah, and I think it. It looks a lot better too. Proportionally, but, shape-wise, looks way yeah. better as well. It just looks like a really nice wagon. I oh god, I know. I've thought about grabbing one. Um, I'm going to be in uh, Munich in a month and a half, two months, and I'll have a clubman. Um, mm-hmm. It'll be the the car I drive around in Austria as well. I'm it's and, funny. just so excited to get behind the wheel of a clubman again. Like I've had, and I, the Countryman I have is great. I've had it for almost a year now. Um, thank you, Minnie. It's great. I love it. But it's not a clubman, you know, it's just like yeah. it doesn't it, you know, you're up higher, like you feel the weight difference. You feel it right away. Yeah. 
yeah. the club and you know you immediately feel the difference when you get in that car in, in a very positive way yeah what's funny is um what was i was going to say about the clubman i completely blanked on that we were talking about something it's living on or it dying off five door living on um no it was uh, it was the four door thing oh clubman yeah What's funny is what's funny with the clubman is the fact that um, I'm getting old apparently. So for one, that's why my brain keeps blanking. But <clears throat> what's funny is the uh, clubman. See, people have uh, there have been pe people I've talked to who have had customers come into dealerships and they look at the clubman. The minute you call it a wagon, they completely tune out. <laughs> mm -hmm. You call it a wagon, they are no longer interested. They want to go. They want to go look at the countryman at that point. <clears throat> It just seems seems a shame that the clubman, yeah. because it's called a wagon, or because it's a wagon, it gets a... Wagon's the perfect form of mm -hmm. uh, daily transportation, in my opinion. Yeah. I would, yeah. I so mean, which, but let me ask you this then. What would you rather see go away? Which, if, if, one thing had to, if one thing has to go away from the mini brand, the clubman or the manual? Oh, well, the clubman, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so we should, I should, I should jet after this, but... I mean, I have like I have an opinion piece I need to write. I, I think I have one sentence on it. <laughs> this this is can I can I use foul language in this in this stream? Does that does that make it's the? It's not going to get us demonetized as okay. long as it's like as long as it's not like horrible. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking for a friend. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's BS, man. Like this is absolutely ridiculous. You you could sell a manual transmission in the United States with no hit on co2 because we don't measure it that way for yeah. until 2030 yeah the parts already exist get sells the thing i mean i don't know i'm sure there's some things i don't know about but i mean 44 percent take rate hard top jcw with manual transmission in the united states 44 so percent like, of them are manuals think about yeah, that so we, yeah so we you tell me that's not a short-sighted move that's that's going to piss off the most important customers that mini USA has the people who probably have two minis in their driveway who are probably mm -hmm. on their third or fourth mini who would be up for buying whatever else you got coming. Those are the people you need to retain. Yeah. To me, this is an investment that makes a ton of sense. I think it's a really short sighted, really short sighted decision. And I am like, I, and personally for me, if, if I don't have a manual transmission, put me in an electric car. Like what's, what's the point? Like yeah. I don't, I don't need to drive an automatic car an automatic ice car like it's an appliance so do you think um, faster and quicker and, and yes yeah, so do, do you think the mini killing off the manual is basically cutting away 44 percent of their customer base no no i mean i think i think some won't buy it but the reality is there aren't many manual transmissions out there anymore i think it's going to disappoint people and turn people mm -hmm. away from the brand in in some ways that yeah. will will you will lose I think a critical segment of your, of your, you know, really fervent fans, unfortunately, at least lose them in a, in a like active way. Yeah. yeah. So Gabe, I know you have to jet here, Nick, I want you to stick around because there are some people asking questions for you. Sure. So I know that Gabe has to head out and go uh, hang out with us with, with some folks that I think you're going to go drink or something. <laughs> I'm going to have a beer or two or, a, or a, not a beer, but something yeah. or other. Corn went out for the uh, clubman in, in manual. I will. I will. Yeah. I, any other? I mean, I guess I'm just reading because I can. I, any other last questions? Anything else? I, mean, I don't see. Well, anything. there's there's some stuff for there's some stuff for uh, for uh, Nick in here, um, mainly related to the mainly related to the uh, cell to your cell phone. I'll pop this up right now. Uh, yeah. VGA, hey Nick, didn't you do a video on swapping out the wireless charging sled on the Coopers? I was yeah. trying to see what the maximum size of a phone after that new sled you installed is. Uh, I don't know the exact size. I could measure that and get back to you. Um, but I work in the Android world, so I can tell you what size Android phones it fits. There you uh, go. If you're an iPhone user, I, I don't know. Uh, but it did, it did get dramatically larger uh, in terms of phone size. I think so that is which it depends on the the, the car i think oh and, and yeah the, and the f56 yeah the iphone the iphone the plus or the whatever yeah but uh, nick also like made it made a 3d printed adapter that you can like pop in it allows for a larger phone to fit in there. yeah if you guys want to hear something really cool i may, may well end on this i'm actually talking to um a, a chinese company that's actively working on retrofitting and they already have the parts they've had them for 
a long time. Retrofitting a new iOS nine or mini OS nine um, system into an R fifty six and an R fifty six. They have it oh. physically retrofitted. They're working on the connectivity right now. That would be cool. So um, I, I hope they work straight with Samsung and just get that screen because that screen was really they, nice. They they have the screen. Yeah. That's the key right there. Yeah, they have the screen. That's not the problem. It's, it's yeah. the South Salerno popped yeah. in where the new models fit larger phones for one. Yes, they've, they've corrected the problem and given us a charging pad, which won't be a coffin that overheats the phone and can fit <laughs> larger phones. Um, Isn't that funny how they built they built a heat those vents were for ones. Uh, those vent, that fan never worked. It always no, it worked. never did. Yeah. But it's it's hilarious. The, the new the I would say the countryman, the way it's oriented is ideal, the new one. Um, yeah. But the J01 is cool too, but it's not like the countryman is nice because it's like angled up. You can easily see it. All right. I'm going to jet. It's been a okay, pleasure. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. See you, Gabe. Nick, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you chime in with me on this one. Roberto sure. Cortez, will they continue to sell the current SC or will there be a period in time next year where there will be a no electric Mini Cooper for sale, assuming that the new SE doesn't come out next year? Yeah, good, good question. Um, I mean, th that's, a plan that's a question for Plant Oxford. Yeah. When, um, <clears throat> when will they kill that? You know, when will they stop producing the F series there? Yeah. Um, I believe I heard that the F 56 SE is supposed to end production. I think either end of this year or early next year. I, I thought it was March of next year. And I think it's going to be in March cause it's supposed to coincide with the launch of the electric yeah. countryman, which is going yeah. to be the only electric for a time sold in the U S that's an emit. That's an electric mini. Which means eventually we'll run out of inventory and there will be a period where there is no SE for sale in, in the North American market, which is kind of mind boggling because it was such a yeah. surprise hit. It, you know, it sold way better than I think that they even expected. So it's like, wow, I'm, I don't what think they could envision these tariffs yeah. that would happen in all this craziness no, in the could, world. But, yeah. but if you want an S, if you want a current SC, I know that there are probably close to 30 sitting at port right now that are, yeah. that are waiting to go to dealerships. And I, I think I've seen some discounts start to roll in on them too. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. I've heard about, I've heard about those too. There's a, yeah. I think the sales manager at Barron was like w working on some deals for some discounts on some electric minis and even Is some that, lease. They're even doing some lease offers apparently. Yeah. It's back to what Gabe was saying earlier though. Is it a good time to buy an SE current SE? Is it a bad time to buy? I mean, th th there isn't really ever a good time because there's always going to be something newer in, yeah. in the future. I think, so. it depends, I think it depends on your needs of, of yeah. when it comes to that car. Um, that's just, that's just an interest. That's an interesting, uh, one one there i think the i think the f56 cooper s was or cooper sc was probably a it was a <clears throat> i shouldn't say was because it's still a, it's still around it's a fun car i never yeah. had a chance to experience the uh cooper e the original from from the r56 generation um i know that was a really fun car yeah. i I'm not happy that mini never brought out a special edition of the electric mini as the the pace setter Oh. I think the, I think the pace setter would have been incredible. If that they was, had, you know, some cool GP3 parts reimagined on a. Oh yeah, yeah. Even if they didn't bring it out as an as an electric car, bring it out as an internal combustion. Just give me, just give me that body kit. I just well, I really felt out. like that. That was a little bit of a testing of a GP4 electric, right? A GPE is yeah. like what I like to call it. Um, you know, that that was a great time to to try that out and see how it looked and see how it worked. Because so, they did also run around, they did also run around on the Nurburgring with an electric, with an electric GP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, GP wrapped up, or done up as an electric, or an electric done up as a GP. I just, right. I, I mean, it was, yeah, it was the GP without an exhaust. Yeah, I don't know if it actually was any faster than the than the regular electric, but it definitely looked cooler it than looked the regular. Cool. I started to think now that maybe that car was just a test, was just the uh, test mule for the pace setter that they were going to build. Yeah. <clears throat> If but we, at least we know they can put. We do know from that car, and I also know someone who did this. You can put coilovers on an on an electric mini. Hmm. You can drop the suspension down an electric mini, and uh, make it look a little bit lower, which is interesting because it's already lifted slightly to to right. account for the battery for the battery pack. So they had to make the wheel arches. I'm curious to see what that would do to uh, range. I'm assuming it would slight, very slightly improve the drag coefficient to to make it slightly better. 
marginal yeah. gain. I don't think you'd notice 20 miles more, but you might notice two miles more. Uh, but who knows? I don't. Yeah. If anybody out there has one, go test that out. Let us know. Yeah. Um, Michael Carlson has a GP as a GP, and he tests he tests out different stuff all the time. He's been testing out tires and everything. I know him because I've done videos of his car. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, VGA's popped in. They are now able to get the 7500 off discount if you lease the car. So there's a right because we've lost the incentive because they're not assembled in the U.S. or have enough yeah. U.S. parts. But leasing yeah. it is where you can get that discount, exactly. which makes it a great price. Like that puts it as one of the best price electric cars out there. Uh, mm -hmm. When the incentives were in place, the car, you were basically getting the car for $20,000, which was crazy. Yeah. Um, so. And Sal Salerno popped in. Uh, they said the new EV Countryman will outsell and upsell the missing SEV EV. Um, that's probably, that's a, I don't know if he's asking it as a question or if he's making that as a statement, but it's quite possible given that it's a crossover that it will outsell the, it'll probably outsell the, uh, at the F56 SE as it currently stands. I think so too. I mean, I think it'll also help really bring in a lot of new customers to the mini mm -hmm. community uh, because of its larger size. Yeah, um, especially it's been really that. nice. The, the current mini owners, the current mini aficionados will also like it yeah. as well. But it's really going to help a lot, bring a lot in. Yeah, especially considering I think the uh, Countryman S, the Countryman SE Electric will be range will be similar. I think to the Volkswagen ID4. I want to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they're on. I think they're on par in terms of range. I think they're even on par in terms of price. So, Probably. if you're going to cross shop cross electric crossovers at that point, the ID4, if you're in similar ranges anyway, the ID4 and the Countryman will probably be ones to to look at because they'll be very similar in range. They'll be right. very similar in packaging, and they'll be very similar in price. So at that I point, was in an ID4 while in Germany looking at these cars, and I can tell you that you're going to want to buy the Countryman over the ID4. Both are great cars, but. The Countryman just stands out. You know, it's, yeah. The interior is so much nicer. It has so much more character to it. And I mean, we're obviously the a car is so much better. You are actually you're a little bit more biased right now than I am because you have the mini logo behind you, your car in the garage, and your yeah. sweatshirt on. So it's like we're all a little biased here when it comes yes. when it comes when it comes to the minis. So absolutely. <laughs> but it's it's only because it's only because that we know the car so well and we know what we know what it's like to drive them. We know how fun they can be we know how practical they can be we know mm -hmm. how we know their shortcomings as well and yeah I'm, we know, the, know we definitely know the shortcomings it. yeah i mean i knew i knew my r53 when it's clutch when it's clutch went out it went out i mean they pulled the throwout bearing out in seven pieces <laughs> yep. but i knew it was going when it went out because i had a moment where i hit the accelerator and nothing happened and then it yeah. kicked in and then a month later i took it to the shop to do the clutch and they and the mechanic comes back with me. He's like, here's your throat bearing. And he's like holding yeah. me little pieces of rubber. Here's some souvenirs for you. Yeah. I'm like, what the heck happened? And he's like, yeah. oh, that's your throat bearing. Your throat bearing disintegrated. <laughs> I mean, so. oh, but over the years, the, the the craftsmanship and quality has vastly improved. I don't think we see as many catastrophic failures. I mean, the, the F-Series is still relatively young compared to the R-Series, but it yeah. seems to be overall better. And these electric ones are going to be, you know, way less to, to break. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be super like, reliable. The battery will be the weakest point and, you know, it should come with a decent warranty. So it, it'll, yeah. it'll last quite the only, a while. Uh, the only, the only uh, weak point I think I know of with the F56 is the engine mount, the upper yeah. engine mount. Yes, the engine mounts. And that, I think I think oil that, substance dripping from your car is probably the engine mount. Well, yeah, but that was what the same thing with the first first gen maze. You could hear, you could tell when the, you saw the ooze coming out of them in the first gens. Yeah. But my thing when I knew I had blown an engine mount in my first gen was when I accelerated. I heard the engine go clunk. Mm, you could hear it shift. <laughs> yeah, you can yeah. almost feel it shift because it's it's a, oh, you a can majority feel, of the oh, weight yeah, of the car itself. The like rotating back a little bit, yeah. but. What's funny about the engine mounts is I think I figured out why on the F56 they fail more frequently, and I think it has to do – this is a personal opinion. I think it has to do with the engine stop-start, uh -huh. the constant rocking of the engine as it stops and starts again. I think that's why I drive my car in sport mode all the time because it disables the engine stop-start right. so the car is constantly running, whereas right. I think that stop-start thing, if, especially if you're in stop-and-go traffic – the engine starts up, turns off, starts up, turns off. I think it's rocking that mount enough that it's twisting it back and forth. Eventually, it's going to fail. Perhaps, yeah, yeah. That's just that's just a theory, though. Whether that's whether that's correct or not is is anyone anyway. uh, yes, another car yeah. and only run it in start stop and just see see how much longer or shorter. Yeah, because right now I run my my JCW. I run it in 
sport mode, like I said, sport mode all the time. So yeah. I have 56,000 miles on it. Yes, I drive my car incredibly, incredibly far and a lot. Um, but I 56,000 miles and usually I was told the engine mounts start to go at 50,000 miles. And I'm like, yeah. I, I've had my car inspected and they said, nope, the engine mount's still good. And I'm like, okay, so maybe there's a, there, there's a, He's maybe making a little bit some, of a difference there. Yeah. Maybe there's some truth to this. Maybe there's a re, maybe there's some truth to that engine mount thing, yeah. <clears throat> but I don't know. I'm giving everybody because of the job I do and the amount of travel I do, I'm giving everybody an accelerated, a uh, accelerated look at a, uh, at a JCW mini is like, let's watch this thing as I, as I increase the mileage on it, basically. Yeah, you're aging it faster for all of us. So, yeah. And, and it's eventually going to, I think it'll, I think it'll probably pay off. It just means I get to, it just means I have more videos to do with that car every, every so often. But it also means that more things, more things start to wear. Like someone asked me, he's like, well, what's failed on the car? And I said, well, nothing has failed on the car that I didn't cause. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's one thing. It's like, oh, it just wore it wear and tear. Is like, sure, okay. No, my brakes went out on the on the my rear brake started failing because of uh, something happened with one of the brake pads. Um, I damaged I, I damaged something on the front suspension because I hit a fairly hard bump on the high on a highway one time yeah. and blew the uh, the headlight leveler where the headlight the load level auto thing, levels yeah the auto yeah. level yeah so the arm that does that thing that allows the headlight to do this or whatever it went this way and the other and the other part didn't move. So yeah. it snapped it basically. I've and, seen that happen on BMWs a lot actually too. So yeah. yeah. Cause I, I got, I had bent the wheels. So I got the wheel repaired and I, then I was talking, I had the car in for an oil change and the guy has it up on the lift. It's like, Hey, you know, your headlight lever is broken. I'm like, yeah. What do you Which is broken? weird. Cause it's, it's down, down by the tie rod. And yeah. It's attached. To, it's attached. You wouldn't expect it to be so far down there. Yeah. The mechanism that's attached to, and then it's attached, I think to the control arm. So it adjusts, Based yep. on that, it it, shoot, yep. it levels the headlights based on that, and I think Same what happened BMW's. is, uh, yeah, I think what happened is it went, to, it had too much travel when it hit that bump and it just broke it. Yep, absolutely. So, it, I mean, it, I mean, stuff like that happens. It's going. There's things like that. They're just going to be like those little flukes that you're like, why? Did, it's like you won't you won't even notice it half the time until yeah. you. But there isn't there isn't a systemic problem. Mm -hmm. you know, with, with this generation, it's all like you said, just normal wear and tear from mm -hmm. using the car. No yeah, like I even I even found out the my uh, stitching on my driver side on my driver side bolster on my upper upper side of my bolster on my seat started to started to fray. Mm -hmm. So at fifty thousand miles, it, the rest of the warranty runs out on the car. So I had it noted before it hit fifty thousand yes. miles. So yeah. when I finally brought the car in, they just replaced the whole seat cover with a brand yeah. new one. Right. Because that that was just something that shouldn't have happened. But I'm starting to look at it now, and I'm wondering. Well, if I was driving ten to fifteen thousand miles a year on average, would I have noticed it at all, <laughs> or would yeah. it have would it have failed three years from now instead of right? You wouldn't have noticed it soon, yeah. So it's just it's just one of the, it's just one of those weird thing one of those weird things with the cars. But those are things that I'm sure are going to be corrected with the new cars. The new seats look look a lot better. Look, they're very better. nice. Yeah, they look more comfortable. I think. I think the reason they increased the pitch on the on the seat is because they got rid of the adjustable thigh bolster yeah yeah <clears throat> so because they don't have that they have to increase the depth of the seat length of, lengthen them a little bit yeah, um, yeah. i didn't get this i mean i obviously didn't get to spend hours in the seat um, yeah. but from the few minutes i sat on it they felt great you know yeah so it's no going to be it's going to be in it's going to be there's going to be improvements there's going to be things we like about the new cars going to be things we don't like about the new cars it's always yeah. it's always the case with every car I've had so many people saying they don't like the new ones. They don't like this. They don't like that. And I'm thinking this is a repeat. This is all everything. They, oh, everything it's the same thing that happened with the F series. It's the same thing that happened with the F series. Exactly. Yeah. It's the same thing that happened with the R56 as well. And what's funny about mm -hmm. the R56, the R56 and the R53 mm -hmm. were effectively the same car. They mm -hmm. took the, the R56 was basically a complete refresh of the previous car, but right. the floor pan was basically the same, same car. Cause the wheelbase didn't change at all. The height yeah. didn't change at all. This, everything else changed around it, but the, it was a basically, a, it was basically a very aggressive refresh. Right. And the result was the R56 ended up being a better car. That being said, um, <clears throat> the curse of the N14 motor, the, let's Peugeot, not talk about that. I got, I got too many of those Peugeot out inspired now. engines, or I should say, <laughs> I say Peugeot and the Brits, the Brits out here are going to laugh at me. So it's what was it? Peugeot. 
<laughs> so yeah. anyway, but those engines like they're not uh, those engines are terrible. I think the I think the problem is they require a lot more maintenance than the average person. Yeah, is going to put into them upkeep. So think, you know, if you if you kept up with it, they they lasted are fine, but not yeah. everybody does that. No. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. It just happens that way. Uh, dash cam Adelaide. One of my friends just recently per bought a, a 2015 F56 Cooper in, in blazing red, and he loves it. Blazing red. Not? Yeah, blazing red's a cool color. Um, yeah. We call it around Kansas City. We call it blazing saddles. <laughs> it just yeah, it's just our, it's a running gag with the, with that with that. Just so, similar to how we uh, similar to how we call manual transmissions Manuel Ricardo. <laughs> It's because we're we're just goofy. We're just goofy like that. Um, Sal Salerno, Nick, what is the sound system like? Is it harm? Is Harmon Carden back or coming back? Harmon Carden is in there. I imagine that's going to be related to a certain package or trim level that you get. But the ones that we saw did have Harmon Carden speakers. And interestingly, I don't know if you could find a shot of them in here. The Harmon Carden speakers are the same shape as the key fob. I have a video of the key fob coming out later, but it's. They're all following that same design language, which is those ovals, those re those rounded ovals. Yeah, I want to see. I want to say right that behind that wheel. Um, but yes, it is Harman Kardon. Um, we didn't get to blast it, but we turned it up, and it sounded just as you would expect with the, with the current there it is. Is right there. That is the exact same shape and size of the key fob as well. Yeah, that is a pretty cool shape. What's cool? What's What's cool to me because I was also talking about. I also kind of like the floating uh, dash that they're doing mm -hmm. in the center. It looks like a lot of these shapes and everything are floating. They like this yeah. one looks like it's not quite embedded into the into the door panel. It looks like it's like floating out of the door panel. Yeah, they all they all are kind of like stacked on top of each other, which gives them some depth uh, and, and some shadowing. Yeah. So that's it's they are they do all look. I can say this about all of these. The pictures and the videos don't do them justice. Uh, yeah. When you see them in person, even my own video and my own pictures, I'm looking at them. I go, wow, it didn't look like that in person it looks way better in person and when you see it in person i think you'll all be really impressed with what that. did you think of the uh what did you think of the new uh finish of the new silvery silvery matte finishes they were doing because i heard they i heard they did away with a lot of the chrome yeah i i mean if you've watched any of my videos you'll see my favorite ones are to get rid of the chrome so i am happy with that um and but surprisingly i don't think there was headlight and taillight trim anymore so you can't even put chrome on there if you wanted to i'm sure somebody will make no, a sticky no, thing you could stick on there but there's no yeah. more trim that you can swap out um and yeah, that the, the matte silver i it i think it looks good there's just enough chrominess to it that it, it stands out but it's not too much which makes me wonder now oh i was trying to say is like i'm trying to i was wondering now is the are the trim rings around the headlights of the F66 gone? I would and imagine it's the same as this. Share this chat. I am looking, I just looked at it. And I'm like, it looks like they're gone. Yeah. I think, I think they're, I would imagine that they're gone as well. I mean, I'm looking, is, I can see something that looks like a trim ring right here at the bottom. Yes. But I almost wonder if that's just a body line now. I imagine that's decoys. Yeah, because I don't see anything at the top of the headlight to indicate a body line. Yeah, or to indicate a chrome ring. I do see that we still get the full belt line completely all the way around on the F sixty six, which we don't get on the uh, F or on the J zero one. No, the, it's, it's only on the sides on the J zero one, which still looks really good. And also in piano black, which I'm a huge fan of as well. So, to me, yeah. this car is great. Um, if you yeah, like chrome, maybe not. Yeah. I think it looks. I think it really looks fantastic, and I know people are going to disagree with me. I think they. I think it just depends on how good the next cars are. If the F sixty six, JCW is really really good, maybe I'd be willing to get out of to to go away from an auto from a manual. But it will take an awful lot. Yeah, to get, it's going to take a lot. Out of the stick shift car, I will. I will rebuild the motor of my of my JCW before probably before i before i uh, yeah well, i mean with the death of that i feel like the electric sales are just gonna skyrocket mm -hmm. and uh, and ice ones probably will stagnate a bit yeah um, but it's just gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see to see what happens yeah um, see what the difference dash, is exactly dash cam adelaide popped in <laughs> hey nick i remember the that video you did on crazily priced used minis i found a 2002 r53 with seventy three thousand kilometers and they want thirty three thousand australian dollars for it 
There is one with less kilometers, and they want fifteen thousand Australian dollars for it. Thirty-three <laughs> though for a two thousand two. Oh yeah. I don't know what that's. I don't know what the exchange rate is on that. Australian. I don't either, but I, that still seems like a lot. Australian dollars to U.S. Let's see. So that's thirty-three thousand. That is twenty-one thousand one hundred and thirty-six dollars. Okay. All right. Twenty. So, Twenty. Twenty-one thousand dollars for a two thousand two. Twenty-year-old car. Two thousand kilometers is probably. I don't know. I can't do. I can't do mileage conversion in my head. I want to say that's closer to fifty-two thousand miles. Yeah, it's in the fifties. Yeah, but. <laughs> So I want to say that's actually not bad if it were a newer car. Dash Cam, are you, are you uh, putting in an offer on this? Is that, uh, is that what's going on here? It's quite possible he might be. Put it, give him 31. Yep. Car Creations, this is ETH, This is another right. thing we have in our little chat group. Yeah. Uh, the Dash fabric looks like the fabric from the R60 Countryman. Does it feel similar or more premium? I ask because my R60 headliner was disintegrating. <clears throat> I mean, this is a brand new car compared to an R60, which is 10 years old now. Um, but yeah. it, it, it did feel like a more premium material. It honestly felt more like a um, if you've ever bought a recent sneaker, like a, a knit sneaker from Adidas or Nike or something like that, it felt more like that uh, material. So it, it did feel better quality. In so 10 years, will it will it live up? We'll have to wait and see. But yeah. I think... I think it's a higher quality. Um, yeah, the the fact sure. you mentioned the knit sneaker, I'm starting to wonder if maybe they're trying to Kate the trying to design the car to appeal to a different to another demographic to a, a younger generation, absolutely. A younger yeah. generation. They're trying to bring Gen in another another generation of mini owners into Which I'm fine with that. Like I don't want the brand to die and in order for it to yeah. live on, it needs to get new customers. So and whereas yeah, there's I'm, a lot of people out there, a lot of older folks who would rather see the brand die, and I'm like, why? Why would yeah. you rather? Why would you rather the brand go completely extinct versus mm, continue no. to live on? That's I'm, like saying, that's like that's like saying they should have killed off the Mustang after the Mustang Two was launched no. in the seventies. I'm like, no, they had to keep the name going, otherwise there would be no reason to, yeah. keep, to keep it to bring it around. It's a, you know, it's it's adapt or die, and so I'm I'm happy to see the adaptations and, and whatnot. And yeah, speaking of Mustangs, people didn't leave Mustangs forever when they came up with the Mach-E, you know, they, they're, they're still doing fine. I still will not call it a Mustang. <laughs> you, can right. you, don't have to buy one. you can style it to look like one all you want. It's not a Mustang. <laughs> uh, Dash can Adelaide. One, one thing that I love about the pre F86 pre LCI is that a cartoon F86 pops up on the screen. And wings actually. Screen. Yeah. I think it still does that. I want to say I still have one pop up on screen and wink at me. I, I mean, I also had a pre-LCI F56. I had a 2016, so I, I know exactly what he's talking about. I Maybe I'm hallucinating. I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. It's been a while since I've been in one. Yeah, I had a 2017 F56, and I my friend Ethan's uh, 2019 F56 JCW is not a pre-LCI to degree. It's an LCI. It's an LCI one, mm -hmm. but it's not an LCI two. I'm starting to wonder then if we're going to call the F56 or F66 really an LCI three instead of a instead of a redesign. Right. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, dash cam again. No, the digital dash has the mini logo. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or the JCW logo in some instances. I think uh, your car, actually, I think the uh, GP has a animated GP logo. Yeah. It's got a little bit extra flair to it. Oh, dash cam. He had to drag in the must, the Mustang. <laughs> These mini owners don't hit crowds, leaving cars and coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is the, the, I guess that's I guess that's true. It's like you could there's there's two different types of mini of Mustang owners, those who hit crowds and those who don't. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's the only two. <laughs> yeah. So Dash Cam Adelaide said he uh meant the he maybe the LCI one does it too. The blint the wing. I think the LCI one does. Uh LCI two, I'm not sure on. Yep. So yeah. But anyway, I think we should probably just <clears throat> wrap things up here. Yeah. Um, good chatting with everybody, Nick. Great to have you on here. We'll probably have to, we're gonna have to do this again because I think this is pretty fun. There's gonna be more mini news coming up. Yeah, here. there's gonna be a lot more coming out. Yeah. JCWs and, gonna, and all that stuff. So exactly, and we're gonna obviously bring Gabe Bridger back back on as well. But if you want to uh, check out what what Gabe has, visit MotoringFile.com. 
Also check out his channel, Motoring File, on YouTube. If you want to check out Nick's channel, the mini vlog, go check go check his his channel out as well. Subscribe to it, like yeah. his videos. He does some great videos. He he's he, it, one of his videos on the J, on the Union Jack tail lights inspired me to do my video on the Union Jack tail lights, and I think I still messed up some of the things that he messed up in his videos. So I think we just continued the pattern. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do it again. We'll mess them up again. Well, I mean, they finally Beamer Code finally has the finally has the settings for for uh yeah finally has the settings for um led lights but mm. mine, mine when i finally got it right the only problem was every time i turned on the hazards when i hit the brakes i would throw a i would throw a fall. yeah you get the air for hitting the brakes too hard or whatever yeah yeah but it wouldn't, it wouldn't even that it would just be like a light fail it'd be like a, a i have a light failure and then the minute i let off the brakes or turn oh, on go, the hazards, it would go back to normal yeah. like okay yeah. i guess i have a problem here with this car yeah <laughs> but it's complicated the, the, the words are in german and code german so not quite but now they're in english yeah now english it's great beamer code is beamer code if you haven't used it before go check it out it's only gotten better each time i highly recommend paying for it to you know support that so so uh, a little bit of housekeeping here smps 2012 use code miniac and you get a 10 percent off at their store so if anyone's looking for trim elements for their cars they do some great stuff or anything you want yeah. um mini usa go check out and see what's going on over there um, motoring file, use Miniac 5 discount code, 5% off, mini performance speed. And last time I checked, chrome, what was it, chrome trims? Carbon fiber, carbon fiber headlight trims, I think is what they are. Oh, headlights. yes. Yep. <clears throat> Those are always fun. And and the R60 Union Jack taillights. Oh, R60 Union Jack taillights. There you go. So, yeah. Um, what else do we have? I love doing house, I love doing my housekeeping on here to chat with everyone. Um, if you're interested in joining the 37 club, I know that we're not talking mini JCW team right now, but go join the 37 club, mini motorsports, 37 club dot mini USA events.com. Currently for the, currently for this year, it's $50 donation to the racing team. We'll get you a pin, um, a stickers. Lander, stickers. Yep. I want to say there's another thing I'm forgetting, but I could be wrong. Those are the three things I remember, but there might be something yeah. else. Yeah. But if you show up at the show up to show up to one show up to the Indianapolis race, and I'll give you and I'll and I'll give you guys a sticker of one of the race cars because I carrying those around like like candy now, just passing them out. <clears throat> but yeah, great chatting with everyone. Great chatting with you, Nick, as well. Make sure you turn yeah. off those uh, lights before you go before you go in for the evening. <laughs> They're, they're on a smart switch, so I can just turn yeah. them off on my voice. Your mini, shop, your mini shop is closed for the, yep, closed exactly. for the evening. Exactly. But good chatting with everyone. Good chatting with you, Nick. I will see you all later. Remember, life is too short to drive a boring car, so drive a mini and uh, keep motoring. We'll see Don't you Don't forget later. to wave. Exactly. Don't forget <laughs> to wave. That is important. Or yeah. at the very least, at the very least, just give me a piece. Just give me a peace yeah. sign. Just let me know you've up there. Yeah. So we'll see all you right. all later. Bye, everyone. <laughs>